What's happening, folks? Geologist Philip Prince back in the Appalachians today talking landscape, specifically the Sequatchie Valley. Really interesting landform. Uh, it's in both Tennessee and Alabama, almost catches the northwest corner of Georgia. There's Chattanooga, Tennessee, for your reference. If you look at the size of the city compared to the valley, it's a pretty big one, a uh, little over four miles or seven kilometers wide. And probably the most interesting aspect of the Sequatchie Valley is that it's got a fault uh, running along its western edge for much of its length. And any state geologic map of Tennessee or Alabama will tell you this. Uh, what you're looking at here, provided by the U.S. Geological Survey, uh, you can click on the various features of the map. It'll tell you what you're looking at. And sure enough, fault right there. It's a thrust fault. Uh, it's a fault along which rocks have moved up relative to the rocks below the fault. Uh, and it has a pretty interesting connection uh, to why the Sequatchie Valley is there in the first place. But this is a pretty worthy feature to talk about just because it's so dang big. Uh, it stretches about 120 miles from southwest to northeast up out of Alabama into Tennessee. It's about 200 kilometers. Uh, that fault line, uh, as it's exposed at the surface, extends for the, the majority of that length. So this is, this is a pretty substantial uh, topographic feature within the Appalachian landscape. And it looks really cool when you see it in digital topography. The image I got right here uh, is actually just from the national map server uh, that the U.S. Geological Survey runs. You can open this up and stream it yourself. And that big, long gash in the landscape there is the Sequatchie Valley. Uh, the geologic structure that the valley is associated with, the structure that we're actually here to be talking about, uh, goes all the way from around Wartburg, Tennessee, down to Dora, Alabama. So again, this this is like a very, very long, but comparatively thin landscape feature. And like so much of the topography in Appalachia, in the case of the Sequatchie Valley, it's very directly tied to geologic structure. Uh, and that's what we're going to be breaking down as we uh, as we move forward here. You throw state boundaries on that, gives you a sense of, of what you're looking at geographically. Um, Interestingly, you know, there's not there's not a lot of boundaries in terms of counties or states or anything like that that match up with the Sequatchie Valley, which is which is intriguing to me, just because it's such a dominant topographic feature. But one way or the other, it's just hanging out there in the landscape. And as far as geography is concerned, uh, it's not really a big boundary maker. So it's not something like, uh, for example, the Savannah River that you see when you're looking at a, looking at a political boundary map particularly interesting around the Sequatchie Valley is something called the East Tennessee Seismic Zone. Uh, now I mentioned a fault earlier, you know, maybe is there a connection here? I mean, is like the land moving or something like that to make this valley? And, and that's actually not the case. Uh, the East Tennessee Seismic Zone uh, is mostly north and east of the Sequatchie Valley. And you can actually go online and do a Google search for East Tennessee Seismic Zone and you can find indicated where earthquakes are occurring and they're not uh, they're not located along that fault that's in the Sequatchie Valley there. So an interesting question is, what, what does the fault have to do with the valley? Like why would, why would that, that geologic feature that's so notable uh, be connected with, with topography like this? You don't really know that it's there if you just look at the bare landscape. This is just off Google Earth here. That's how the fault would run. Uh, and, you know, it's it's not immediately obvious within the landscape. There's not some very abrupt break in the topography, some big long gash or something like that. Sometimes, like, you, you might see an image like that from California, for example, where, uh, where an active fault is breaking the land surface. Absolutely none of that going on here, but... It is a geologic feature that's really firmly connected to uh, to the landform here. So to start to break down the understanding here, think about the overall topography in this area. That's where the fault would run. You got a plateau on one side, a plateau on the other side with these really incredible gorges that, that cut through these plateaus. Um, really significant recreational areas to the folks in the Sequatchie Valley and over in Chattanooga and really in the entire region. Um, sort of iconic uh, plateau style topography with gorges, huge sandstone boulders, one of a kind places. And of course you got that Sequatchie Valley separating those two plateaus there. If you think about geologically what's there, you got erosion resistant rock making one plateau with those gorges cutting into it. The streams carving the gorges are flowing down to get to this weaker, more erodible rock 
that's actually making the valley. And then on the other side, you got to have more erosion resistant rock. And that gives you those two high places that are going to define the boundaries of that of that lower valley. Of course, you got the Tennessee River flowing down it here from the uh, from the top of the screen to the bottom. And this relationship is what is what it's all about here. Um, and what we're about to diagram, uh, I'm going to hop out to paint, of course, in a moment. What we're about to diagram here is is a really fundamental example. It's a simple example, but it's the way that you have to think about the Appalachian landscape. The Appalachians are a very ancient mountain range. Uh, what you see in terms of mountain topography and valley topography today uh, is not related to where things were rising up during the formation of the range. Erosion dominates the sculpting of the Appalachians today, and it does so by interacting with uh, with all of these really interesting geologic structures that formed a very, very long time ago. So I'm going to hop out to paint, draw this thing out. Hang on just a minute. Okay, here we are in paint. I'm going to do the usual block diagram format to try to give you a sense of how geologic structure interacting with erosion has shaped the Sequatchie Valley into this crazy long thing that you see today. Um, going to be a pretty simple layout here to the diagram. We're going to have a sequence of sedimentary layers sitting on top of deeper rock of the continental crust that we call basement in the Appalachians. That would be metamorphic rock or deeper igneous rocks like granite. You don't see it at the land surface anywhere in this part of Tennessee or Alabama. So we've got three sedimentary layers drawn out there. And we're going to have those three sedimentary layers break along a fault that I've drawn there. And that breaking is a result of them being pushed, bulldozed, if you want to call it that, during Appalachian mountain building. So you can imagine those layers being pushed. And they're going to slide along the top of that basement and kind of push up along that fault. It's a structure we call a fault ramp. And that ramp is going to be key to producing kind of a broad fold within those geologic layers. All right, so pretty simple geometry there. Let me clean up the old one so you can get a sense of that folding. And exactly what happens where the fault stops there underground. You could treat that in a variety of ways. For simplicity, we're not going to worry too much about it. But all you want to see here uh, is that that folded structure that results from the pushing and the layers kind of sliding up on that ramp. Okay, so at this point, we can start to color some things in here. We'll make our deeper layer. Obviously, we don't have a line touching there. That's always a problem here that we can fix it. Here we go. That ought to do it. Okay. Got that layer. We'll have a lighter color layer here in the middle and another lighter colored layer up here on top. And we'll make that basement rock down deep gray. All right. So with that basic fold defined, at this point, we'll say this is kind of like the, the end of Appalachian mountain building. We're out at the very edge of Appalachian structure to begin with. So we'll put a land surface on our diagram there and say that this fold here is gonna make that kind of gentle raised area on the land surface. Well, at this point, here comes erosion. Uh, and erosion is going to continue for a tremendously long period of time. Again, you hear about the Appalachians being an ancient mountain range. That's very much the case. And erosion is gonna to go to work. Start wearing the top off of that raised up area and then everything else around it. So here we go. And things start to get interesting right as erosion gets to the top of that purple layer where those layers have been pushed up. That purple layer and the blue under it uh, are those weaker layers. That's the stuff that's much, much more easily eroded. And as soon as that fold gets cracked open, if you will, like a Cadbury egg or something like that, and that weak rock is exposed, erosion is going to go crazy and start carving out the core of that folded area. And that's going to be the key to developing that valley where the layers have actually been pushed up along a fault. It seems counterintuitive that 
pushing the layers up is going to ultimately turn into a valley. But that's the case because that weaker material has been brought up to the same level as the much harder rock that's represented by the tan layer there. The result of this is going to be that that fault line is now exposed there, running up what's going to be the valley. And this is what made the Sequatchie Valley, as you see today, actually erosion. Uh, the fault line itself is an ancient thing. It's the surface along which the rocks slid into their current arrangement. But since that time, uh, it hasn't done anything really other, other than just sit there and be eroded to produce the landscape you see today. I'm going to clean this up, make it look nice, more like the landforms you see. I'm going to run and fast forward. Hang on just a minute. All right, so that that's the Sequatchie Valley. Um, it is the the eroded core, if you will, of a big geologic fold. Uh, and interestingly enough, where the rocks have been pushed up the farthest, that's where the valley is most developed. Um, if you go up into this area, this would be around like Crab Orchard, Tennessee. Uh, the rocks have not been pushed up quite so far, and erosion has not yet gotten into those softer, deeper layers. Uh, and the fold is actually still like a high point in the landscape. So. Again, it's counterintuitive to think that where the rocks have been less pushed up, the land is now higher, but that's the case in very many locations in the Appalachians uh, because erosion into these ancient geologic structures uh, is what's actually making the landscape look like it does today. So we'll hop back to the uh, to the maps now and take a few more looks. So that idea uh, of the place where the rocks are less pushed up Still being a mountain, uh, again, has no better example than what you see up northeast of uh, of Crab Orchard there, where 40 is kind of kind of going up over the hill. Um, northeast of Crab Orchard, the, the fold has not been, we use the term breached in geology. The erosion hasn't cracked it open yet. The hard sandstone is still in place on there, and it makes this big, what we call like a whaleback type of mountain. Uh, down southwest Crab Orchard, the erosion's already gotten into those softer rocks, uh, and it started to carve out that valley uh, like you see further to the southwest. And up at this end of the uh, of the big fold structure, the valley is still a little bit discontinuous. Uh, but of course, by the time you get down towards Chattanooga, especially, uh, it has that very continuous shape. And the whole reason that there's a fault in it uh, is just because it's a it's a it's a big fold structure from from the ancient Appalachian. It has absolutely nothing to do with anything moving and changing uh, today. So, when you're looking at a feature like this, or again, just about any landform in the in the Appalachian Mountains, you got to think about what used to be there. And of course, looking at at this part of the world, you would sort of envision those folded layers uh, sitting on top of what today is is sort of like the skeleton of the Appalachians. How much rock has been eroded away here? No one knows for sure. It would be many thousands of feet. Um, there's bituminous coal in this area. Uh, and to produce that, you're going to need over 8,000 feet uh, or over, over almost two and a half kilometers of burial under even more rock that's that's now gone because the coal is essentially at the surface. Um, a safe estimate might be to say that there's something like like 10,000 feet of rock eroded away to to expose what you see today. So that would be like three kilometers uh, of erosional loss here. It's really something crazy to think about, but at the scale of the Appalachians, particularly in terms of time, they've been here for quite a while, or at least the structures that form the Appalachians today have been here quite a while. It's up to erosion to carve them out uh, and make them look like they do. So it's kind of a kind of a cool change in in gears here from uh, from Barbados and the Caribbean. But ultimately, uh, it's motion that's making this landform much like its motion that's making the island of Barbados and and so much else geologically that we uh, that we see on Earth. And that's sort of what this page is all about uh, is is learning to see movement 
when you look at geology uh, in addition to, to stuff being really old. Maybe stick around in the Appalachians for a while. Not quite sure yet, but uh, hope to get another one going here in a few days. Hope you'll check it out.